हेलो गाइस दिस इज ऑप्टोमेट्रिक्स अखिलेश कुमार दिस टाइम ऑप्टोमेट्रिक एकेडमी वेलकम्स यू ऑल विद अ न्यू वीडियो ऑन हेरिंग्स लॉ ऑफ इक्वल इनरवेशन एंड सेरिंगटन्स लॉ ऑफ रेसिप्रोकल इनरवेशन लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड आफ्टर द शॉर्ट इंट्रो हेरिंग्स लॉ ऑफ इक्वल इनरवेशन This law also known as Herring's law of motor correspondence state that an equal and simultaneous innervation flows from the brain to a pair of muscles of both eyes which contract simultaneously in different binocular movements For example in rotating the eye to the position of dextroversion an equal and simultaneous energy will flow to right lateral rectus and left medial rectus Similarly if the eyes are turned the position of dextro elevation and equal and simultaneous amount of energy or innervation will flow to right superior rectus and left inferior oblique During convergence an equal and simultaneous innervation will flow to both medial rectus This law is the major physiologic principle involved in the understanding of binocular motor cooperation of the eyes when this law was formulated by Herring in 1868 a reference was made only to the voluntary eye movements many authors still write that Herring's law is valid for voluntary movements actually it applies to all the normal eye movements including vergences and other involuntary movements Let's move on Sherrington's law of reciprocal innervation. This law states that during ocular motility an increased flow of innervation to the contracting agonist muscle is accompanied by a decreased flow of innervation to the relaxing antagonist muscle. For example, during dextroversion an increased innervational flow to the right lateral rectus and left medial rectus is accompanied by a decreased flow to the right medial rectus and left lateral rectus muscle. Now we shall see some of the applications of these two laws in clinical practice. Herring's law provides the scientific basis of the covert test. We shall study this with respect to right lateral rectus palsy. In the primary position because of the weakness of the right lateral rectus there is an unopposed action of right medial rectus which causes the right eye to adduct. So the patient presents with the right esotropia. This deviation of the affected eye in primary position with the normal eye fixing is referred to as the primary deviation. Now, when the right eye is forced to take a fixation by covering normal left eye, since the right lateral rectus is weak, extra innervation has to flow to the right lateral rectus to make it abduct. By Herring's law, the same extra innervation also flows to left medial rectus, which is the yoke muscle of the palsy right lateral rectus. This extra innervation causes the left medial rectus to overact, resulting in a deviation that is greater than the primary deviation. This is termed secondary deviation. So, in a paralytic strabismus, the secondary deviation is greater. than the primary deviation as a result of herring's law let's see how these law apply to superior oblique palsy patient with superior oblique palsy may fix with either eye in a right superior oblique palsy with the normal left eye fixing the primary deviation is right hypertropia because of the unopposed action of its ipsilateral antagonist the right inferior oblique with the paralytic eye fixing extra innervation flows to the weak right superior oblique to enable to fix by herring's law the same extra innervation flows to its yoke muscle the left inferior rectus causing it to overact along with inhibition by sherrington's law of its antagonist the left superior rectus the overaction of left inferior rectus and underaction of left superior rectus both result in a hypotropia of left eye In addition to this when the paralytic eye is fixing and moves into the field of action of the right inferior oblique that is levo elevation since the right inferior oblique is already contracted due to unopposed action this muscle needs to contract very less in levo elevation and so by herring's law this less innervation also flows to its yoke muscle the left superior rectus The left eye is thus hypertropia in levo elevation this underaction of the left superior rectus by both these mechanism is referred to as inhibitional palsy of the contralateral antagonist as the left superior rectus is the contralateral antagonist of the right superior oblique that is it is the yoke muscle of ipsilateral antagonist 
over time due to anatomical changes in the right inferior oblique there is further exaggeration of the inhibitional of the contralateral antagonist these laws are not universal and do have some exceptions the important ones being dissociated vertical deviation which is an exception to herring's law and duanes retraction syndrome which is an exception to serrington's law duanes is because the lateral rectus co contracts with medial rectus instead of relaxing on adduction that's all from these topics kindly subscribe the channel and press the bell icon thank you for watching